Der Ecker. That would have given him. Start screaming. <laughs> that would have given him a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you still going back and what we talked about out there in the driveway? Is that we, okay? Yeah. I wonder what that is. Alan just sent a message. Leaving the house now on my way. Okay, let's see. Brother Allen is coming. He just sent a message, said he's leaving the house now and he's on the way. Okay. So, so you must have had to do something at Yeah, the, probably had to do something at work over there again this morning. Yeah. Okay. Mic's on, everything's on. I'll turn this on before I get started and just make sure everything's going good here. Hope everybody's had a wonderful morning, day, afternoon, evening for some of you. Um, not getting a late start, but just kind of waiting. And now this thing ain't going to do what it needs to do. Oh, come on. <clears throat> okay. He is coming. He just sent a message that said he's leaving the house now. Good to see everyone this morning. I know you're still coming on, and that's okay. We uh, had a major storm here last night, so I've had a few things going on where I had to get this going again. Everything is knocked out, so um, if something does happen during the broadcast, um, it could be the effect of I had to restart everything, readjust everything, and... and uh, get all the mics up and running and get the picture back and get it all back on the right track in the um, in the vmix so but we're we're there that's why i'm a little bit jittery right now i'm thinking what did i not do right <laughs> all right <laughs> and i'm looking around at everything but but uh, it's good to be here and um, hopefully it's coming across for you We've been talking quite a bit on the changeover from the old regime, so to speak, of father-son relationship, and it's changed over into a new relationship, a relationship that was set up all the way back in the beginning, and that was a father-mother relationship, mother of all living, father um and on an equality basis and um, then we got into the changeover during the changeover and during transitions a lot of times because of old traditions and and rules and creeds and dogmas man-made things we get into all kinds of fears and phobias and, and fairy tales and and uh, misinterpreted scriptures and just all kinds of things that we know we're now working on those and removing those from us. So I, I had talked on the phobias for the last, I think, two or three um, sessions that we've had. And today I just wanted to, um, I'd mentioned a couple weeks back, maybe a month ago, I said, it's time for 
for most of these new people, I, I call them young, but they're not all young. Most of these new people, whether young or elderly, that are just coming in, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, um, I, I wanted us to, all of us, to begin to try, think about what you see and what you're, what you're coming into and where you're headed and what your vision is. And, and uh, we have three groups. I think one of them is... Uh, um, science and humanity one of them is um, awareness and spirituality and awareness and then one of them is a spiritual movement it's three groups on Facebook and I had asked that we would start all of us start kind of showing the understanding that we have and not everybody uh, these these new people coming on saying well if Don Parnell doesn't say it it's just it's that we we don't need it. I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want people to feel that way. I want you to feel like as you step into this, you got things to say. You have you you have feelings that you've come through. You have emotions. You have you have intuitions. You have empathy, compassion. You you understand the biology and the sciences and all these things and 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 that's going on in your body. I'm not worried about whether you know all the elements out there, but the biology and the science that's going on in your body, um, and so to speak, write about it. Tell the people, and um, so that they can see that there are people all over the world. And I ask that, and and uh, many of you stepped up and started doing it, and it's really appreciated. And it's everything from the pictures to the photos to the to the sessions that you're having just just like the zoom session I apologize I haven't been able to be on those I was on the first two and then I picked up a, a landscaping job that's going to last me out almost the whole summer um, Daniel has a painting job there at the same place and so we're kind of out there together once in a while he's painting the house and painting the decks and the buildings and I'm cleaning up all the landscape for this uh, for the owner and so it gets kind of um, I, I mean I'm, I'm usually gone on Tuesday mornings when you're having the session so um, I, I, it's not that I'm trying to skip them and it's not that it's too early or any of that I just can't be on it because at six o'clock in the morning I'm up getting all of my equipment ready making sure my batteries are up making sure getting all the stuff to the truck and headed on my way so um, when all that's over I love the zoom sessions I've went back I've listened to every one of them and really some great subjects some great discussions and I've really enjoyed it and don't think um, oh no Don's not coming to them so therefore they're not uh, they're not um, successful that's just not true you you're doing the things you're doing you're doing them from your heart and if I never ever ever make it to a one of them you it's you you're doing well and uh, so that's what I wanted to see and I want to talk about that just a little bit this morning um, I wanted to talk about the voice breaking all dimensions there is a voice that breaks all dimensions now it doesn't have to it it can dwell and speak and be dominant in one dimension and the other dimensions not even know what's going on but on the other hand it is a voice that when it wants to it can become loud so to speak it can become heard through every dimension and every veil and everything there's a voice that we can hear I made mention a few weeks ago that I'd like to see more of us writing or our understanding so the new ones the elderly and the youth can understand that this is not a one-man ministry it's not a one-man show there's a voice speaking in every one of us man woman when you come fully connected and you really understand it 
the voice is speaking through these birds out here this morning, mm -hmm. giving me a good feeling, hope, giving me assurance and security that that Christ has control. I'm watching the the trees, the birds, the grass, the growing, the seeds, the fields, the everything. It's all speaking. Uh, I think of Psalms 19. If you want to go over there and read it, he said the sun rises and it has a voice of its own. And it raises up in the day and it said its voice is heard. I mean, it's everywhere. Everything raises up when the sun comes up. Many, many times when I'm sitting out and, uh, and hunting, I really love it when it's a clear day and the clouds aren't on you and you can sit there and it's brisk and it's cool and that sun starts peaking and coming up and there's a there's a point where that when you're sitting there in the tree um, all of a sudden you feel and you hear uh, leaves everything everything out there raises up with that with that sun and even the wind you'll feel it all at once it comes traveling up out of the valleys and it raises up everything is praising the sun and uh, that's exactly what happens inside us when we come to an understanding it's not that we feel like we have to raise up or we have to wake up or we have to do this or that that's that's not it at all um, the issue is we do we feel it we raise and it's not a matter of trying to make yourself do it so I wanted to talk about that the spirit now raised up many hundred men and women across the globe that are walking in this understanding and bringing it forth and I appreciate that and I've taken what the prophet John heard in his vision and wanted to open it up a little bit for us to understand that it's our voice it's our voice that is breaking all dimensions and bringing to order um, a new way of life we're the ones doing it so in the book of Revelations, John writes this, and it's the fifth chapter. And if any of you have studied William Branham's message at all, you know that the fifth chapter was the coming of the Lord. You know that, if you want to call it that, um, the coming that everybody was looking for, the third coming, the um, Acts the second chapter was the second coming and of course Christ in the Old Testament um, was the first coming he come to redeem us Jesus in a human body walking in flesh named Jesus on the shores of Galilee that was his first coming and he redeemed us through Calvary he put his body there redeemed the earth and when he you know, actually, a lot of people say, well, you know, he redeemed our spirits, he redeemed our souls, he did, a, he redeemed the earth. Mm -hmm. That's what it was about. He was bringing the earth back to its proper position, cleansing it so it could be used by our spirit and soul mm -hmm. um, and used in, a, in the proper manner. So then the second coming was Acts 2, and that is where... Jesus made the promise in St. John 14, 15, and 16, if you want to go back and read those, and there are other many other places. He made the promise that he would come again, receive us unto himself, that where he is, we can be also. And he'd done that when he went up on Calvary, gave his body, released himself from the body, and moved back into the Spirit and came on the day of Pentecost and gave them an understanding by doing all these things we had the first and the second coming and then the third coming was revelations the fifth chapter which is very simply said revelations the tenth chapter which is simply said revelations the nineteenth chapter um, you can just keep looking at how john wrote these cycles and you can see where this third coming strikes throughout the scripture and throughout the book of Revelation. So Revelations 5 and 9, 
we know that there was an elder, an angel that had a strong voice and he was crying out, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Loose meaning reveal the seals thereof. So there had been seals coming down through the second coming that um, had, like Brother Branham said, had been opened, but there was still a secret remaining. Um, Paul, Arenas, Martin, Columba, Luther, Wesley, Branham, they, they opened up those seven seals, uh, but there was still a secret laying in there uh, that was untouched, so to speak. And at the end of the second coming, we find that there was to be a Revelations 5 where let's, uh, we know it was an angel proclaiming with a strong voice who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And we know where that angel was proclaiming with a strong voice who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. It was in the ministry of William Branham standing there in Jeffersonville, Indiana, opening up those seals. Now, it wasn't William Branham that opened them, but it was Christ using his body to open those seals the same way Christ used his own body to open up, finish the first coming and open up the second. He's using William Branham's body, but it's Christ to open up this third coming. So the angels and the elders, the 24 elders, the Old Testament, the New Testament, they all cast their crowns. We know where this took place, Revelations 5. Revelations 3, at the end of the church ages, bang, he's caught up, and it says that. And where we're caught up to, we're caught up to Sunset Mountain, and we've seen the whole Revelations 4 is a description of what was taking place on Sunset Mountain in the spirit realm unnoticed or unseen to the rest of the world and then after that took place and the third coming took place on sunset mountain then he comes back to the earth again and we find that they were shouting they were they were there was voices there was thunderings there was lightning and it said that a bloody lamb came forth it says uh, Revelations 5 and 9 and they sung a new song we're talking about this fifth chapter third coming and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God listen closely by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every tongue, kindred, and not the blood that hung on Calvary, but the blood out of every tongue and kindred and nation. It was humanity in the second coming that brought a redemption plan and brought us into the third coming. Redemption plan just being he caught us up and redeemed us or repositioned us. And he did this and thou hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Where at? How, did everybody read that? If you haven't got five and, and verse 10, maybe somebody ripped it out of the Bible and you don't, didn't get that anymore. But it says, he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign in heaven. Up there somewhere? No on the earth and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne now you know where the throne is the throne is in the heart of man it's in humanity and there were many angels round about in humanity and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands it just in innumerable and they he heard them and they were saying with a loud voice this is the third coming John is looking at the third coming he's not looking at Calvary he's looking at the third coming and these people if you go back and read the first eight verses of chapter 5 
you will find out that these people and Christ is the same thing. That this third coming was a a lamb with seven horns, seven eyes, and seven spirits. Now, what do you think? And it said it came up, and when it came up, it had been slain. If you read that in the ninth verse, it had been slain, and it was worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And John looked, and he saw a lamb slain from the foundation of the world, he didn't see a lion even though it was a lion that was ripping the seals open. So Christ was coming in, in a, a dual form to bring forth a redemption in the flesh and at the same time bring forth a revelation in the spirit. And he was breaking it forth. And the number, they were saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature listen every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So John began to scream out when the third coming struck and the third heaven opened, Paul seen unlawful things that shouldn't be uh, talked about in Paul's time. And John saw hundreds and hundreds of millions and thousands of people shouting with a loud voice, glory and honor and riches and wisdom and strength and blessings to you and john said i had a voice and john represents us john said i had a voice that when i started shouting i realized something all oh, every dimension was hearing me every single dimension and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them Heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that sitteth on the throne. So there's a voice when the third coming opens, when the seals open up, and Christ has moved back into the earth and his attributes of the third coming. There's a voice that's piercing every single dimension. I don't care if you believe there's one, I don't care if you believe there's a hundred or seven or however many dimensions you believe in. This is saying that every single one of those dimensions, people living above the earth, in the earth, below the earth, in the seas, animals, everything heard this voice and rose up. Listen, Jesus Christ opened up the book of life to all on Calvary. And he became humanity by transforming into the spirit and reincarnating himself into all flesh. He's every one of us. Pay close attention to what the prophet said. Thy blood out of every kindred tongue and nation, thousand times thousands of voices, and the voice broke every single dimension. All heard I saying. The voice is breaking everything. The voice is recasting and changing everything it doesn't matter if it's a what we term as a good plot or a bad plot a good plan or a bad plan a good person or a bad person whatever you think hopefully you can get off of that after a while but whatever you think all of it is recasting and we are moving into a brand new uh, play a brand new show a brand new field and as we move into it, let's look at Revelations, the 19th chapter. He says, And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Now John seen him reigning in earth in the 5th chapter. In Revelations 19, John sees him reigning in heaven. And so we find out that heaven and earth are the same thing. 
We are together now and matched in as one and heaven and earth are the same thing. You don't go anywhere to go to heaven and you don't go anywhere to get into the earth. They're the same thing. We're here. And after these things, I heard a great voice as of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Sounds like the same thing as Revelation 5 going on. Because Revelations 5 and Revelations 19 are the same thing. I think I got two there. Yeah. He goes on in the second verse. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Or in other words, this great whore burned, and her smoke rose for a long period of time. All the, the seals opened it up, and the seals... It, uh, it, it gave us all the kings there. It became the kingdoms of our Lord. Absolutely the truth. Absolutely the truth. But for a long period of time, this recasting of the great whore and Babylon and her doing away, smoke, you know what smoke is in the, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? Both smoke is a sign of what? Rapture. Mm -hmm. Going up. Mm -hmm. Rapturing up. And here, this great whore has been judged for her fornication and has been avenged for the blood that was spilled during that time. And this great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, hath been avenged. And what's happening? Her smoke, her rapture, that's what smoke is, her rapture lasted forever and ever and ever it's a long time purging all of these things that the great whore and, and her casting and her time in the earth brought forth. We are going through that change now. And everybody says, well, I see all this horrible stuff. You know, and what I see is the Spirit, Christ, moving into every one of these things mm -hmm. and casting them, recasting them, burning them, purging them, and raising them up in smoke or in rapture to become something different. Mm -hmm. Because, not because they were such a horrible thing before, but because it's not needed anymore. That part is not needed, so therefore rapture ourselves up beyond that. Again, they said, hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Don't think it's going to going to happen overnight that Babylon and the earth and all that's therein is going to be raptured they're, they're rapturing and they're rapturing right now mm -hmm. into greater things about humanity but it's a long time that the smoke has rose and it's a long time yet coming and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne. Now we read in the 15th chapter where it was Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. But here it says it's God sitting on the throne. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying amen and hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne. So now a voice is speaking. A voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude. And as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, all of this is going on as he was calling us. Now, I want to read something to you over here again. Revelations 19 and 1. And after these 
things I heard. Great voice of much people. And that kind of stuck with me. After these things. I thought, what things? What does he mean, after these things? Well, after Revelation 16, 17, and 18. Revelation 16, 17, and 18, if you just go read it, is the recasting of Babylon. It is the doing away of the great whore. It is bringing the vengeance and the judgment to cast everything differently into the earth and bring a recasting into the earth. And so we read that, and we read here where it says, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, many waters, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. There's a voice here during all of this recasting, during all of this smoke rising, during all of this rapture out of Babylon. There's a voice here, and it's crying out, and it is a voice of many waters. You know what that is. It's people. And has the voice of mighty thunderings. The seven thunders have brought out a brand new day. A voice of many thunderings saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. There's no devil reigning. There's no second thing reigning somewhere. There's no rogue spirit out here. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. He is in all things. That's what omnipotence is about. Nothing is here that is not the Lord. And the voice was crying out something. This voice that shakes all dimensions. It said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. So the marriage came. The wife made herself ready. She moved out of the church ages, out of a courtship. She moved into marriage. She made herself ready. She became a wife and not a bride. She'd done all these things, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. She's purged. She's recast. <laughs> uh, I hope I don't scare you too bad, but this great whore up here that was going through a smoky rapture, here she is. Here she is, and she is granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Forgive me if this offends you, but a whore made a virgin. Mm -hmm. Recreation. Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that you, she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean, white, a brand new woman, a brand new nature, a brand new day, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's what's coming out now. That's what we are. That's who we are. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now listen. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Future home. Go read it for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Brother Branham said, this message is the call to the wedding supper. So here we are. We've been, Lord, that's been 50 some years ago. I hope we're done eating by now on, <laughs> on that. <laughs> I hope we've moved on into a brand new day, a brand new life. The harvest is over. You come through the stalk. You come through the blade, you come through the stalk, you come through the tassel, you came through the, the husk, and you come back to the harvest, and then we've been harvested. That was the harvest, the opening of those seals. Okay, so now what do you do? You take what was harvested, and you begin to use it. What do you do with the, the, the harvest? You eat it. You take that harvest, you make bread out of it, you make cakes out of it, you make all sorts of things out of it. You, you, you take the harvest and the harvest has something special to do. After it comes through the process, it starts another process. And that process is the process of Joseph, which is feeding the whole world. Mm -hmm. Joseph's voice broke every dimension. I wanted to get into that for just a moment. When he was 
He was when he was silent as a boy. He was having visions. He was seeing the moon and the sun and the stars bowing to him. He was seeing the stalks of the field bowing to him. He was seeing all of these things bound up and and came bound and before him. He was seeing all of these things happening. And Joseph was taken, sold into a pit, brought into Egypt, put into Potiphar's house, and then taken from Potiphar's house into jail after being cast as an adulterer, a, a whore. He was cast as an adulterer. The wife said he did this and this and this. Then he got recast because of his visions and the vision of the Pharaoh and he was brought to the throne and the voice of Joseph, the Pharaoh said, your voice will be the voice that every man listens to and what you say goes. And Joseph began to, the seven years of plenty and began to store up and store up and store up. And listen, Joseph took taxes from everyone except his family. <laughs> Joseph took land from everyone except his family. He took the deeds, he took the land, he took he took the harvest, he took their children and put their children to work. He done everything. His voice, what he wanted to do was heard throughout the land mm -hmm. and he recast the earth. Mm -hmm. He recasted the entire earth. The earth lived off of Joseph. It's the way it lived. And we have that same voice right now we are a voice and the entire earth is being recast and in so doing the voice of Joseph is being heard throughout every single dimension <laughs> true and righteousness are these things and a voice came out of the throne saying praise our God all you servants and I heard that were a voice of great uh, multitude the Lord reigneth and called us to a wedding supper and we went through that and to her was granted that she should be arrayed fine linen and white and he saith unto me blessed are they which are called to this great recasting blessed are they that come under this great change and after these things this is what he said after these things here's what happened all of this great recasting from whore to virgin, from from all of the the blood being spilled to 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 the vengeance and the recasting of the earth, to a time where God the Omnipotent reigneth in all the earth, to a time when the voice is heard throughout all the earth in every dimension. And after these things, after the church ages, that's what the things John was saying. After these things, after the church ages cease and we leave the Piscean age, the age of hierarchy, and the age of insecurity and fears, after the church ages cease, and the Babylon religion has fallen, that was the cry in the 17th and 18th chapter, the great horror, and now, alas, alas, Babylon has fallen, the great horror, and she fell, and after Babylon's religion had fallen, has no more hold on the people, after the judgment is complete, judgment meaning he takes her and he changes her and he recasts her and he judges, he looks at what happened through the church ages through his eyes of judgment and declares it perfect. And when he's finished judging this woman who had a duality, of the bride of Christ and a whore, he now takes that, that side of the coin, which is the whore, he recasts it, and after the church ages cease, and Babylon has fallen, after the judgment is complete, after the Antichrist and the false prophet have been cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, that's all what went on in the 16th, 17th, and 18th chapters. The false prophet being cast into the voice, into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now is the time of our voice. Mm -hmm. After these things, after these things, I heard the voice of many people 
after Babylon is judged, after the white throne judgment, after the throne turns everything white, makes everything look clean and pure and holy, after that, now is the time of our voices being heard in every dimension. John represented us. And I heard my voice crying out and all the world above the earth, in the earth, beneath the earth, all the animals in the seas, everywhere, everywhere, they heard my voice. Jesus said, and John said in one place, they'll hear the voice and the sea will give up their dead. And this will give up their everything. When this voice starts screaming, everything is rising up. Mm -hmm. The dead are coming to life. Mm -hmm. Little fishy, I give you back your life. You remember that? William Branham standing in the boat and he gave the fish back his life. He said the fish was laying upside down in the water mm -hmm. and it was dead and he pointed at it and said his guts was ripped out. And he looked at it and he said, little fishy, I give you back your life. And the guts went back into his mouth. The fish flipped up and took off. <laughs> well, that's exactly what's happening now. In this Aquarian age, there was a fish, Australia's fish, and they were upside down. Mm -hmm. And when they were upside down, the Aquarian began to pour the living waters in and the fish came to life. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at right now. We are where the voice is screaming out, little fishy, Pisces Australis, earth and all that's therein, I give you back your life. Mm -hmm. The life that we started out with, father and mother relationship, I give it back to you. Listen to what a Tory said in the last message. This is a brother that wrote. I want to talk about some of the things these brothers and sisters are writing because it's some great stuff. And I told you I wanted to do that if you would write some things. So we see this going on. Babylon is recast. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and all are cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Smoke is rising, and that's what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're looking at what we think is a, is a terrible disaster, just a refusable thing, and it's not. The smoke from all of this is smoke is a rapture. Babylon is being restructured, refit, raptured, brought into a new cast. Listen to what a Tory said in the latest message. The sonship end is giving and surrendering to a new day. To a day wherein all shall hear. And we said that in the last message. Mm -hmm. So Brother Isidro makes this comment, and I loved it. I, I, I would love to see all, and there are so many of us now, but I'd love to see so many that are writing these things of their understanding because, yes, I may sit there and I may say, thank you, that was great, or, thank, or, or write a little bit afterwards or whatever, and somebody else may do the same. And you think to yourself, well, they already knew that. That may be true for thousands upon thousands and thousands of us. We may already know it. But there are thousands upon thousands and thousands that are new people coming in, mm -hmm. and what you are writing means everything to them because they don't yet know these things. Right. So we see this, and Isidro, he says, how can all hear? He said they'll hear, and I read to you where all heard the voice traveling through every single dimension, above heaven, in heaven, in, or above earth, in, in the earth, below the earth, in the seas, everything heard my voice screaming out. How can all hear? Listen to him. He says, because it's one dimension now, which is true in a sense. It, it has, the, the dimensional walls are breaking down. While Babylon is being recast, Babylon was a city of walls. I forget how many, I read one time where Babylon had like 
13 or 14 sections and it was all walls and you go into certain sections where the poor lived you go into certain sections where the rich lived you go into certain sections where their kings and all the royal family lived and Babylon was a was a, a, a city of walls and he said but now it's become one dimension this is a Sidro he says it's become one dimension and, and I can agree with that Yes, there are still dimensions all over the place out here, but this voice has transformed it into one because mm -hmm. it's traveling through all of them. Mm -hmm. And so we see because it's one dimension now, no more separation. Ephesians 1 and verse 10. It's a time wherein heaven and earth and all of us are brought together under this voice. It's Psalms 19. All of us hear the voice of life raising up. How can all hear? Because one dimension is one dimension now. No more separation. No more locality. That's true. This is the unknown. This is the eternal now. This is the thing that we bypass. We bypass that father, mother, relationship this is the thing we bypassed in the beginning and it's now restored we have stepped back into equality we step back into where this spiritually there's no more gender we step back into understanding these things in such a manner that it's that it is equality it is female it is male and female united together as one it is not separation. It is not 50-50. That's not what it is. It's 100-100. And we are all in this together. We all have, he goes on to say, this is what we bypass in the beginning and it's now restored. The Aquarian gospel is revealing all these things to a new people to a different time. Absolutely the truth. Completely different time completely new people with a new understanding with a new heart Ezekiel said with a heart of flesh with compassion and love and empathy for one another now I wrote this that was brother Isidro Estrada beautiful we all have the basic flow of energy or life forms we all have it that each of our creations stem from no matter what you're in, what you're doing, your life form, your creation stemmed from this life form that I'm talking about. Some that I've been thinking on are instinct, gravity, feeling, intelligence, intuition, and memory. There are so many more that shape our lives. These things shape our lives every day. We have a definite action and reaction to every one of the moments inside these identified frequencies of our energy. We are identifying more and more and more frequencies all the time. Don't get me wrong, they've always been there, mm -hmm. but they've been unknown. Mm -hmm. And now we are identifying them. We are coming to a more of an understanding all the time these frequencies of energy give us the basic actions of this human form the intuition the gravity the security the oneness the compassion the empathy the love all these things these frequencies of our energy give us the basic actions of this human form we live we laugh we love we cry, we want. These are all basic energies that, and, and we enter a frequency of it. We desire and we want so much more. It's wonderful these energy frequencies in our lives, they shape and form us in the deepest ways with one another, making us one with one understanding. We have transcended so many arenas of life as we move spiritually. 
We've moved beyond the conflicts and the walls built between us by religion, tradition, denomination, war, economic status, racism, ethnicity, nationality, flags, emblems, on and on and on. We've transcended all of that. Sure, when we look and we see somebody uh, denigrating and making statements about you know, what we've been a part of, we can get upset sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't see things going the way we thought maybe they would go or whatever. So we see this happen. That doesn't mean we separate ourselves from others or others' arenas. They're out here. The political arena is out here whether you like it or not. And it is really shaky right now. Across the world, I mean, we got a babbling idiot. Excuse me. We, we've got a president that cannot say a straight sentence. We've got we've got people trying to prop him up. It looks like uh, Bernie's vacation. You know, if you ever watch those show, what what was it? Weekend at Bernie's. Weekend at Bernie's, where they <laughs> they want to use his house and they want everything to go right, but he's dead. He's dead. And so they prop him up everywhere. <laughs> and the media's propping it up. Everybody's propping it up everywhere. <laughs> the world's propping it up. The United Nations is propping. They're propping up this guy that can't even speak a, a normal sentence. And so that's, and that's, you say, well, that's the United States. No, that's the world. <laughs> because the United States is the leader of the known world. And then you've got Cuba, you've got Rafael Castro, who's fled to Spain somewhere now, and Cuba is going through her freedom cycle, and you've got communism trying to take over the United States, you've got socialism trying to take over, you've got, you've got all these, this is a political arena, and you need to be able to maneuver within it. <laughs> You need to be able to, you've got economic arena. You need to be able to maneuver in this economic arena. And I would tell you that if somebody don't get this, this uh, present administration, um, somebody running it or out of the way, whichever, is only going to get worse and worse and worse. And the economics is already, just look at it. That now you should be able to live in these arenas because of your revelation and your understanding. You should be able to live inside these arenas and maneuver about them, and speak your opinions freely and do all these things. And but understand that these arenas, the reason they're changing the economics and the and the political and the military changing, unbelievable across the world, and and law and order and, and on and on and on while these things are going through all of this what we would think is chaos it's Babylon falling and the smoke is rising up or Babylon is being raptured up into a different recast and we need to be able to stand in these arenas when this is going on we see religion tradition denomination war economic status, racism, ethnicity, nationality, chaos, destruction, we're watching it. That doesn't mean we separate ourselves from others or from all these arenas. Well, I just ain't going to say nothing about politics. I'm going to separate myself. Well, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to be a partaker of any of their, any of their economics. I don't care if it's socialism, capitalism, communism, whatever. Yeah, you go ahead and try that. If you think you can, you can't do it. You are going to live in it. This is our arena. This is our day. Now, we are in a spiritual arena that has moved us and transcended us above these things, but it doesn't mean that you don't walk around in it. Jesus himself, in a human body, understood exactly what was going on all around him, but he stayed within the arena and he worked with the people in that arena so we see ourselves we enter them that doesn't mean we separate ourselves from others in their arenas we enter them with a glad heart 
knowing that we can contribute to a lasting effort to change those things needing attention. We know our voice. Joseph, we don't have enough uh, money economically to do what you're saying. So Joseph's voice said, okay, sign over your deeds. Sign over this, sign over that. Uh, pay more taxes. And Joseph just kept taking it in while he was loading up all of the, the bins and the harvests and everything else. He was, he was doing it at a point to where he even took the people of Egypt in as slaves. They signed their lives over to the government. You wonder why everything's going on the way it is out here. The Joseph ministry is out here. So we see this happening. You should be able to step into these arenas of others, such as politics, religion, economics, military, and understand their battle trying to come to peace. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> They're trying to come to peace. And there's a handful of people out here that in their greed, they don't want peace. And it's only, like we've often said, it's only about 2% of the world. 98% of the world wants a, a, a lasting peace and enjoyment and comfort and live long and prosper. 98% of the world wants that. And then you get a few that don't want it. You should be able to enter these and understand their battle trying to come to peace. There is, and you've seen it, all of us have seen it, look at the Olympics, look at, look at everything that's happened. There is a real, it's absolutely real, a physical issue going on right now concerning gender identity. It's showing up mostly in politics, in athletics, gender identity. I seen where a couple of celebrities said, we don't want to be referred to as a he or a she anymore. We want to be referred to as they and them. Well, you're just one person, whether you know it or not. And you're not a they and a them. You are a he or a she. Mm -hmm. But there's this great gender identity and it's collapsing in politics, religion, and athletics, Zeus. We see it all over the world, and it's collapsing. No matter how hard you try, listen to me, there are some physical things that are physical, and that's it. Now, William Branham went across, and he got into a, a dimensional place, and he saw men and women. Yes, he saw he's and she's, men and women, males and females. He said the males, you know, were a great stature, all of them said the females, all of them had beautiful long hair, breasts. He said they were all so beautiful. <laughs> and that's something um, the world's trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. say, well, there's, there's no such thing. Well, you know why? Because we, in the spiritual realm, are going through exactly that. We're going through a doorway that Paul opened 2,000 years ago and said there's no more male or female, there's, there's no more Jew or Gentile, there's no more of these things anymore. We're all one in Christ. And spiritually, spiritually, there is, we're genderless. We are genderless. But we are still in a physical earth. And no matter how hard you try, you cannot become an opposite gender. I don't care who you are. Go have your operation. Go do all those things. You still have the hormones. You still have the body that you were born with. You may have cut your package off, and you may have done all kinds of things, but you are still 
a male. Mm -hmm. There's only two genders in the physical, and that is male and female, period. There's no transgenders. There's none of those things, and I love them all, and I don't have a thing against them. I can walk with them. I can talk with them. I can, I can enjoy myself with them. But natural selection is absolutely the true thing mm -hmm. in this physical world. No matter how hard you try, you cannot become an opposite gender. You make it up in your mind, but that doesn't make it so physically. It just doesn't. Doesn't make it so in your body. Physically, I am a male, and I will always be a male. Even those seen by the prophets and others, dimensionally, living in other dimensions, are still physically male and female. When other prophets look to the other side, there were males and females. So let's not try to bring into this physical world which we are going to live in, let's not try to bring in things that absolutely are against the move of nature and the spirit of nature and the spirit of natural selection. Don't, don't try to do it. And if somebody else tries it, don't, don't belittle them. Don't, don't make them feel like they're outcasts and, and you can't deal with them and they've blasphemed and they've done this. And that. Don't make them feel that way. Love them. But here we are in this world where the, they're getting the spiritual and the physical mm -hmm. Because we are going through a real spiritual time when the message folk are saying women can't do this and women can't do that and women shouldn't speak up and women shouldn't be in them, blah, 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 blah. And men married twice and, and, and just on and on and on and on and on. Just don't worry about it. Stop it. <laughs> We're in another day spiritually. And physically, we will be who we are. Even those seen by the prophets, physically, that will always be. In our spirit, we have both attributes spiritually, male and female. But in our physical bodies, we continue the male-female gender. So don't say, well, Brother Parnell is just fine with that. No, I can love. I can have gravity, I can have intuition, I can deal with it, I can, I can live in that arena, but I can't be that. There are not more than two genders in society or in nature. As I said, I have always understood best in my life by following natural selection. And here again, natural selection is best. It's the best way to solve the issue at hand in their world arena. Every time I get around them, if there's any talk, and there's many of them that I know, if there's any talk, they talk their transgender, and I talk natural selection. I can't go there. The earth, the physical, the nature, everything is set up on natural selection. And producing and reproducing doesn't happen in your field and therefore I, I can't be a part of that because it's all about reproducing, producing and replenishing and you can't do that. So here we are. I change daily. This is one of the brothers I believe it's Felix. I love what he says here. There are not more than two genders in society. I'm sorry. I changed daily since the day I became flesh. Brother Felix, Marion. Grave, womb, temple is a place of change. Death, hell, and the grave. It's a place of change. Grave, womb, temple is a place of change, death, and growth, resurrection. There is a fire taking us through these circles always we're always cycling through these circles you can put your identities to them you can put the names to them you can say what you came through you can name it you can you can call it whatever but what you're doing is you're going through death hell and the grave you're changing 
Here is your grave, death, hell, and resurrection on display. Here, right now, we're walking in graveyards. Our dirt <laughs> has been resurrected, and we're walking on two feet. And we know who we are. And the Word became flesh. That flesh man is your grave. The womb and temple of you. The living God, the day you eat of it, that day you make a choice, you shall die. The word die, in other words, you shall change. The day you eat thereof, you begin to change. The day you eat of it, the day you make a choice, you shall die, you shall change. Your choice brings you your change from what you were and your resurrection into what you choose to be. So choice is a very important thing. The things that you are choosing is bringing about your death to certain things and bringing about your resurrection into other certain things. The choices you make are burning Babylon, raising it up in smoke, and you're rising higher and higher in your conscience as you burn Babylon. Babylon being me. Here's my Babylon, here's my city. And I'm telling you, not too many years ago, my city was full of walls. I had separations between the rich and the poor and the black and the white and the ethnicity and the on and on and on. And I had separations of all sorts. And Babylon, this flesh man, is burning and rising up in smoke in rapture to become the great woman, the great virgin, I have moved from whore to virgin. I have moved from Revelation 16, 17, and 18 into Revelations 19, and I'm wearing fine linen, and I'm understanding who I am. We have come through a total change. We are always in the valley and the shadow, flesh man, of death, change. We walk in the flesh man, the shadow of the real man, and we are in the shadow of death, in change, taking place all the time, ready to make choice and die and change from our old reality and resurrect into our new choice. Brother Felix is on to something here. You know, some people, they just want to say, choices don't matter. Yes, it does. Your choices burn up certain things. And your choices resurrect you into certain things. And you'll have to walk that path until you get everything you can out of it and burn it. So these are very important things. There is a zeal, a fire taking us through these circles or through these cycles of grave, death, and resurrection always. Whenever we make new choices, we cast death and hell and the grave. We cast these choices and their atmosphere into the lake of fire, inward, into the mind, the soul, the heart, into the lake of fire, into the spirit of which we are, into our eternal person, into our inner person, and resurrect into our new choice and atmosphere. So we go through the lake of fire and brimstone and the change and death and hell and the grave on a daily basis. If we can understand this in the proper manner and realize heaven and hell are conditions of the spirit. It's scary, isn't it? These things are happening simultaneously within us all the time. I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. Brother Felix Excellent writing. These are the things I'm talking about. If you just sit down and think about your process, think about your life, think about what you've gone through. I seen something where Antonio Carlier or whatever he's, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but he wrote a, a beautiful understanding about his father and his sonship. And I thought, this man is getting it. This man understands. He went on to say this, Brother Felix. If ye then, being evil, 
whether you like it or not Jesus said you being evil if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father the one in heaven you are outside outwardly if you being evil with all of these things going on around you if you know how to take care of your children and give them good gifts and feed them and take care of them and love them and nourish them how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him how much more shall the father take care of his mother relationship his son all of these relationships how much more matthew 7 11 and felix marion says my comment the father is a humanitarian oh, isn't that the truth the father is a humanitarian spirit we have overcome and we're living in a time to take the father's throne and let that humanitarian spirit flow from our attribute of father pillar of fire living in us let the attribute of humanitarian flow from it or in other words the father stepped into the human flesh and let him now become flesh and let him begin to act in a humanitarian way and stop worrying about so many rules and laws and regulations being put onto this flesh that he stepped into take this not in a sonship relationship anymore but take this body in a father mother relationship i like this sister i believe it was sister elizabeth parsons wrote this how is my behavior towards myself when i'm in mother father relationship think about that how is my behavior towards myself well, man, when I'm in a mother-father relationship. How is my behavior towards others when I am in a mother-father relationship? I, I, I've been in a father-son. I know that relationship, and I know how it feels to be a father sometimes, and I know how it feels to be a son sometimes. And I know how to be talked to with discipline and sternness. And I know how to talk with discipline and sternness. And I know how to adjust myself to be able to, when it's all said and done, that no one is demeaned and no one is outcast, but all of us are still in this thing together in a father-mother relationship. How do I treat myself? in this relationship how do i treat others in this relationship how do i behave toward myself when i am in father son relationship you know it was discipline it was it was all those things trying to grow in that sonship trying to bring that sonship up through tutors and governors and ideas and educations and diplomas and and careers and jobs and and everything else it it's bringing these things up how do I uh, behave toward myself when I'm in father-son relationship? Pay attention. How do I behave towards others when I'm in a father-son relationship? You know how it feels if you're in that sonship and the father's talking to you. Sometimes it can be, it can be a little bit disciplinary. It can be a, how, how are you going to form this relationship to bring the son into maturity to where you're talking with an equal and to bring the mother relationship into maturity where you're talking with an equal and bring all of these attributes up in consciousness to where you're talking with someone that you are expecting to receive growth from just as much as they are expecting to receive growth from you. That's what this is about is being able to deal with one another in these relationships. Finding it fruitful to ask myself these questions and answer them. Answer them for yourself. Quite good homework for the pencil. Amen. Can you take the pencil all the way 
to the earth. All these things that people are writing, it's, it's beautiful. And there's so much more out there. I can only do so many a day. But when I see I am nothing, that is wisdom. Amen. Because nothing is the Spirit. The Spirit is unknown. It is nothing. It has to form itself into something before you can say, that's the Lord. That's the Spirit. I can't point at anything out here that I can't see and say that's the Spirit. I, I can't point at it. It's invisible. But those things that come out of nothing, out of the Spirit, when I see I am nothing, that is wisdom. Wisdom that carries me back to understanding that I am spirit. I am all of these great things. When I see I am nothing, that is wisdom. When I see I am everything, that is love. I like that. Wisdom tells me I came from an unknown something it was nothing. It was unknown. And now that I have manifested myself, I can see that I am everything. I'm not just this body of flesh. I'm that squirrel sitting out there on the fence. I'm those doves sitting out there on the fence with their little ones. I'm the rabbits coming out from under the shed. I am the grass growing. I am all of these things. I am, I am all of it. I am everything. And that's love. Love brought me to that point. Separation never brought me to that point. All of our religion, all of our separation from the world, separation from people, separation, no, separation never brought me to being everything. I separated the devil from me. I separated uh, Christ from me. I separate. I put him out there somewhere trying to help me in an advocate way or an intercessor. I separated everything from me, and I thought, you know, there's just little old me. <coughs> but now I realize I am everything. When I see I am everything, that is love. When I see I'm nothing, that is wisdom. Between these two, my life flows. So good. That is that's straight to the point. When I see I'm nothing, that's wisdom. When I see I'm everything, that's love. And between these two, my whole life just flows. That was Granger Miller. Thank you, Granger. Beautiful. So many times that we use, I'm sorry, so many terms that we use for the last six or seven years. It's true. We've come through a lot of terms and changed up a lot of things. What we're teaching is in total conflict to what they have grown up traditionally in their understanding. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely mm -hmm. true. And I wrote that. And now Brother Edwin makes a comment on that. If we go back, Edwin or Roman, if we go back since 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, and on up into 20 and 21, we find a lot of changes scripturally and fundamental backed up by nature, biology, science, and everything else that changed our thinking on what we are talking today. It is true. We are passing through the cycles of our growth. All of it is us. It's everything is us. And we are passing through these cycles of growth. And if you drop out of one cycle into another, don't think, um, you know, that was a bad cycle. No, it wasn't. It was a cycle that you needed. And it was a cycle that you came through growth. <coughs> and you grew more and more all the time. Very clear in the scripture that you cannot eat manna of yesterday. It is rotten. No preservation of manna. You can't keep it. As Paul told us, he tears it down, the old writing, and regarded it not. 
This is what Paul said. It's closed. I don't require it. He said, everything that I learned, I counted it as dung. You know what that is. I hope all of us know what dung is. There's piles of it you can step in out here in places if you're not careful. <laughs> but he says, I have taken these old writings, regarded it not. It's closed. The same thing is in the new. As William told the zeal, Christ closes the New Testament. William Branham said that. He that is in you. He closes the New Testament and opens up a new way. He said that. The seals, listen, he said that the Laodicean church age came to total darkness. You know what total darkness is? Complete unknown. And then he said that the seals opened up a new day. It is the rising of the sun. Shalom, the sun has risen. It's brought us a new day. And he said the sun won't raise again when he was talking about Abraham and, and Sodom and Gomorrah, he said the son would, when, when the word was made flesh in Abraham and the promise was given, he said the son never rose again until Sodom was burned. Okay. So now we see Sodom has been burned because a prophet stood up on the mountain and said, it is the rising of the sun. So Sodom and Gomorrah have been recast. There's no Sodom and Gomorrah out here. You're just seeing the smoke mm -hmm. rising as we're moving into a higher consciousness. <laughs> that was Brother Edwin. Brother Isidro again. I really like this. I love these little things that, that people are putting out. I'm wondering when I read a little from a neuroscientist, when he asked a question, a neuroscientist asked a question, what happens after the explosion? Order or disorder? The neuroscience says, what happens after the great explosion? Order or disorder? It's a good question. And it struck me because I know there was a big explosion that happened in 2014 and there was a huge explosion and out of that explosion there was so much order that transpired they think it was chaos but it was the beginning of a higher order the great intelligence is organizing its energy and matter into form and unifying all the forces of nature, bringing it all to one, as we see it happening all around us to create such a masterpiece. So based on what we came through, based on our very own experiences, what happens after the explosion? Order sets in, a new world order. The political scene is trying to do it, they don't know how yet. The religious scene is trying to do it. They don't know how yet. They're wrestling through New World Order after the great explosions. The military world is trying to do it. They don't know how yet. The economic world is trying to come to one. They don't know how yet. You know why? They'll struggle and struggle and struggle until we spiritually lead the oneness. And when we spiritually lead the oneness, we'll begin to pull all of these other arenas into this oneness with us and this chaos. And we'll find out that this is an order being set up. It's not a matter of, of, of uh, destruction in the way that we think. It's the future home that William Branham talked about. It's a destruction, but it is a changing. It is a recasting. It is a bringing us into a new world order. And we are doing that spiritually now, bringing ourselves into a new world order and becoming one. And we are watching the rest of the arenas and the rest of the world 
and the rest of the frequencies and everything else trying to move with the flow of what we are doing spiritually. And from 2014 till now in 2021, I've seen nothing but new world order coming into existence. It's happening all around us. Jesus said, you cannot sew an old garment with a new piece of cloth. This is Brother Antonio, I believe. Yes. And he sent me this, and he said, Brother Parnell, can I show you this? I'm dealing with some brothers, and, and, and I, I thought it was just beautiful. He said, Jesus said, you cannot sew an old garment with a new piece of cloth. You can't. It'll just rip. And the new heaven and earth cannot fit into an old way of thinking. Absolutely true. You cannot bring all that old way of thinking over here into the new. There's a voice now, and that voice is breaking every dimension, and it's clearing out all of the old thinking. All the problems that the Pharisees gave the people in the time of Jesus, I love this, all the problems that the Pharisees gave the people in the time of Jesus could not be repaired by Jesus. He couldn't repair it. It, it had Israel <laughs> it had Israel so misinterpreted they were they were sacrificing children. They were mixing the Babylonian religion with the old Jewish laws. They were they were <laughs> killing one another. They were, they were so much going on and all the 5,000 some odd laws that Moses had set up down through, he couldn't do anything with them. The problems that the Pharisees gave the people in the time of Jesus could not be repaired by Jesus. So, what did he do? He tore up the old garment of the law he began to rip up all the ordinances. He began to throw them away. He began to cast them into the fire and remold them and remake them. The old garment of law, he threw it away. He recast it. He said, new wine can't be put in old wine skins. Strong wine can be stored in new wine skins. So I'm building a new kingdom. And I am bringing a new structure. John in the Lord's day said, I saw the old heaven pass away. So he saw what Jesus did and a new one come into being. The old heaven of the law which worked in the nation of Israel passed away with the life of Jesus Christ. So the first heaven, the Old Testament, was gone. It was done. It was ripped up. Moses and all of his laws and everything else was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and recast and made new. Under Jesus, the second heaven opened up. This lasted for 2,000 years. And you know that. We talked about it from Acts 2 all the way out to Sunset Mountain. And in the coming of Brother Branham, at the end of the church ages, he brought the second heaven to a close. And he said he did. Time was no more. Revelations 5 is Revelations 10 is Revelations 19. Revelations 5 was Christ revealing the blood of every kindred, tongue, and nation and how it was a bloody lamb walking down through the ages and had redeemed itself in the second coming. Revelations 5 and Revelations 10 took that understanding and revealed it and opened it up. And the seventh angel sounded. And when he sounded, all the kingdoms of the world became the kingdoms of our Lord. And he opened the book. And then he came to where it was a time to eat the book and it wasn't his place. Did you know that Brother Branham, you just go search it for yourself. Did you know you'll never find where he talked about Revelations 10, 8 through 11? 
-hmm. Not one time. Not one time. Because he stopped at Revelations 10, 7. He knew that was his scripture. Mm -hmm. He knew that was the end of the church ages. And it was his place to reveal those seals and open up a new day. And the new day is take and eat this book and become the book. Become the whole thing. I heard a voice saying, take and eat, Ezekiel. I heard a voice saying, take and eat, John. I heard a voice saying, take and eat, William Branham. I hear a voice today saying, I have eaten, and I hear it is breaking every dimension, and I am understanding who I am more so than I ever have. Under Jesus, the second heaven opened us, opened up this last, this late, lasted for 2,000 years. He brought the second heaven to a close. Time was no more. Seven thunders broke the seals or revealed the seven mysteries hidden in the seals. Paul had a great vision. Actually, he, like Brother Branham, did not know if it was real or a vision, and he tells us that. And he said that he saw what was happening in the third heaven. And the things that he saw, which is where we just broke into, the things that he saw were not even lawful to be spoke of. <laughs> Let me tell you this. If you think that where you've come to, you will have ease talking to the message people with it. I've been thrown off of forum after forum after forum. William Branham messages, Pentecostal messages, um, all all sorts of forums. I have been cast out. I have been called an idolizer. I have been everything under the sun. And it doesn't bother me a bit because I know where I stand at and I know the things that I'm speaking are third heaven and they are not in the third heaven as of yet. They're not here. They're in a political arena idolizing William Branham and all the seven messengers. It's, it, it's not a church arena anymore. It's a religious, political arena is what it is. The spirit is not leading and guiding all of that. He's burning it. And it's just smoke rising. And all of these people will be, sooner or later, a part of the smoke rising. So we see this. He said it wasn't even lawful to repeat what went on in the third heaven. If Paul had to speak of things he saw in the third heaven, he would have been considered going out of the law because he said that it was not lawful to utter such things. Jesus never spoke it. Paul never spoke it. Brother Branham said it was the sword of the king. In the experience he had in Sabina Canyon, he said that he was afraid of that sword and it fell into his hand and it fit perfectly. That's what he said. He said it fit perfectly. But you know what else he said? He said it left him. Mm -hmm. He saw Revelations 10, 8 through 11, and it fit perfectly in his hand, but he couldn't speak it. It left him. It was for someone else. Mm -hmm. This great word, this great sword that would go throughout the world and pierce asunder every dimension and everything would hear it. It was for another day. He and Sabina Cannon, he said that he was afraid of the sword that fell in his hand and it then left him. He called it the third pull. He knew about the first two, but the third one he seen and it was in a language that he did not understand and could not make it out. That's what he said. He said it come by him. It was a language he heard he, and, and he said it was in an unknown tongue. Mm -hmm. Huh. William Branham looked into the unknown and said, that's out there mm -hmm. to a place where it's going to be after me and it's not my place to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's really what he was telling you. It's not my place to talk about those things. It is coming. And now we are in the unknown. Yes. Yes. So we see this. The first coming was to the Old Testament saints in the theophany bodies. The spirit moving in a theophany body through the prophets, through Melchizedek, leading and guiding. So we see that. That was the first coming and it was to redeem. The second coming was to the New Testament saints in bodies of messengers 
Paul, Irenaeus, Martin, Columbus, Luther, Wesley, and Branham, and it was to catch the people up out of the old first coming. And it did it. And then, but the mysterious part was the third coming. William Branham never talked about it. Jesus <laughs> never talked about it. Paul never talked about it. But when you go into their writings now, you see it all through it. So we see this. Now, the mysterious part was the third coming. Look at the pattern of the tabernacle. This is Brother Antonio still talking, and it's a beautiful revelation. Holy of holies, an invisible God. Most holy place, God in the priests, in and out of their experiences. The priesthood in the, in the second realm of the tabernacle was the Christ. The pillar of fire was the Christ in the third heaven. The priesthood was the Christ in the second heaven. And in the, this outer court, the court of the whole nation where the blood was sprinkled and forgiveness given to the whole nation, first heaven, prophets. Pillar of fire. Second heaven, priests. We see it. Third heaven, kings or the people. Is that why the sword of the king fell into Brother Branham's hand? It was not the sword of a priest. It was not the sword of a prophet. It was the sword of a king. Mm -hmm. We're in the outer court now. The inner court has been broken down. The second heaven has been broken down. We're in the third heaven. And right here it is, right in front of you. And you are living in kingship. You are living in a, not in a priesthood, but you are living in a people of nations who have all, all of us have become kings and priests. What does a king bring? sustenance and security to the world or to the kingdom and a king has all sorts of people in his kingdom and they walk about in love understanding one another first heaven saw first heaven law of the father second heaven grace of the son third heaven the holy spirit the water and blood is from the mother and is done away with at the birth of the new age. That's exactly right. The water, the water and the blood brought a sonship. And then the, the water and the blood is done away with or we move out of sonship and come back mm -hmm. to a father-mother relationship. They don't depend on the water and the blood anymore because they are filled with a life of their own. This is the third pull. This is Adam with the title deed. And we are the God of the world. <laughs> I like that. Now listen to me. This is a brother that is just breaking into these things. And he's, he's picking it up right away. He can help you and you can help him as he's coming through these things. He wrote that to a Massive group of brethren in the Third Testament. Adam and Eve, with the title deed, that's us right now, mm -hmm. with the title deed, gods of this world. That was what man was at the beginning. That was what they were to be. Mm -hmm. gods of this world was that the unlawful thing that Paul did not speak about <laughs> I, I think it's a big part of it yeah. I think it's a very big part of it the more we understand that, now listen don't get scared the more we understand that we are the almighty God that we are the great spirit and that we built all of this in order to have a growth of our own attributes. It is the Father and Son, is the Father and Son. Now listen, we took Father and Mother, and we bypassed it and put it in the husband-wife, Father and Son relationship. 
We come down through all of these years, millenniums, and we're moving back into a father-mother relationship, understanding who we are in all of its equality. Is the father and son, or could I say, was the father and son just a process in the expression? Mm -hmm. Father and mother and father and son, husband, wife, are just attribute expressions mm -hmm of what we've now come to, mm -hmm. a father-mother relationship. Did all of those processes of sonship, was that so we would articulate and pinpoint and understand exactly the beauty of a father-mother relationship walking in the earth together? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe we have come through a major, major process and a voice is now breaking down every dimension, every wall, everything. Babylon, Babylon, alas, Babylon has fallen and the great whore has been avenged and she has been cast into the lake of fire with all of her false prophets and everything else and the smoke is rising. And we're watching it. And the smoke is a rapture. Mm -hmm. It is rising up. It is happening all around us. Mm -hmm. If there's anything anybody... These, uh, I, I notice these natural, these attribute processes. As we've gone through them and we're unfolding, one thing they all point back to, natural selection. Every symbolism... Every view, every perspective, everything it does, and it's about all points back to one thing, natural selection. Why? Because in bringing these out, there will be people who choose to go opposite of that, that small minority. Why? They're the contrast. They've got to bring that out. Yes. But it, all that does in exposing that is just shows the purity and the realism of natural selection. That's right. Brother Branham said it many times, it takes a bad woman to stand <laughs> her up next to a good woman in order for us to be able to understand exactly. what a good thing looks like. Yeah. That's yeah. what we had going. Yeah. And this, this bride that started out as a good woman in Acts 2, became a whore down through the church ages, left her first love, took on Satan, let him sit in her seat, let the processes take her over, and she became a whore. And in the end, she is cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, and all of her prophecies and all of her quotes and everything comes right back around, and she is the perfect little fine linen virgin mm -hmm. standing in Revelations 19 go headed right straight into a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Same woman all the way through. And where in that process it showed Eve losing all and failing all, it shows the other end of it when you get into Revelation where she never failed one time. She gained everything. She in gained other words, everything. it came back around and she was able to recast herself and regain everything that she was meant to be. Yes. Amen.
What a wonderful Mm-hmm. Love bless.